Uh, welcome to this Wednesday live stream. It's been about a two month break. Um, I'm going to do these more periodically. I don't want a set time every week. I think it's easier for me to get excited about doing a stream and then uh, going for it. So that is what we're be doing today. I'm going to be doing a coloring demo on this lovely hampire. So if any of you have questions during this, please put at Vonner and I will answer my questions to the best of my ability. And uh, I'm here to chat about anything. It doesn't have to be specifically about art. We can talk about movies, the holidays, marketing, um, the business side of art, whatever it is that you are uh, thinking about and we'll just have a discussion. And yeah, let's just have fun working together. And today my tea that I'm drinking, because I, I usually do mention what tea and I'm doing a candy cane lane. And as Tigel said, it's very American. And yes, it is, because I'm very American. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for coming to the chat. And ah, you guys are great. Um, I did not get my fish bubba. Uh, I decided to put that on hold while I'm still figuring out uh, the pet situation. And honestly, I probably am going to be getting another cat soon. But I don't want to. I don't want to hype that up uh, too much because then I would have to. Uh, follow through and I, I want that to be a uh, down the line type of thing okay so let me go ahead and explain uh, my coloring process and then we'll get into kind of the more fun stuff here and like i said this is going to be more of a fun relaxed stream it doesn't have to be super serious and i'm just really excited to talk with you guys it's been a, a while and i'm in a really good mood so i hope we enjoy each other's company okay so this was a pencil scan that i did and uh, like I said before, this was actually part of Justin Gerard's Monster Challenge, and I interviewed him last week, and it was a lovely interview. You can go check it out on my YouTube, but uh, he kind of like re-inspired this love of fantastical, but with like a almost comical, with like a little bit of a humor uh, added to it. And I think my art sometimes does veer into like too serious, where it's all like mooka and pretty. Uh, but sometimes I like to have my more macabre or like silly and I, I don't want to just you know put myself in a box if I, I can only do this serious pretty art because I, I feel like I have a variety of interests and I want to display that within my work. So this little guy obviously is part of the pretty uh, category and he is going to be um, the first of many of these little monsters that I create because the Gerards apparently have this monster challenge the first Wednesday of every month. So actually next Wednesday, there's a new monster mashup and I will be joining that live stream. So if you want to join it, you can look for Justin Gerard and, uh, I believe he only does on or stream on Twitch, but I will be there and I will be joining in this little monster challenge. Uh, hi everyone. Hello. Hello. And, uh, for this guy, I'm going to be showing you basically the way that I color, and this is specifically if I color a pencil drawing. So let me take you through. The first thing that I do, and wait, let me make sure that you guys can see my layers here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to zoom my, do, do, do. I'm going to zoom my Cintiq out a little bit. So I want you guys to be able to see all the tools and whatnot that I have. There we go. Move that to the side. So as you can see, I usually don't have a lot open on my Cintiq when I'm using Photoshop. I like to keep it pretty open. So I usually make a new layer, put it underneath, and then I change whatever the pencil layer is to multiply. Oh, and I already had it there. And the bottom, I'm gonna fill in with white. Now, the whole purpose of what I'm about to do is basically creating it uh, a selection tool so that we're only painting within the subject matter. And if you've been to one of my coloring stream before, you know that this is uh, kind of a technique that I always use. And it's one that's used by a lot of artists uh, in terms of efficiency. This way you're not you know, going outside of the lines and you can keep it contained within your subject matter and you can just have it, the colors really focus on that. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either literally paint around your subject matter and then take your eraser tool and go back in and then go right up to the edge. That's one way and it's not one that I discourage, but the one that I normally do is I use a selection tool 
And for this one, I'm using the magic wand. Now you can see how it grabs a good chunk of the areas, but then where it's really light, it's the selection tool. Let me zoom in if you guys can't see that. The selection tool, it gets a little muddy and you can change the tolerance at the top here. And with a higher or with a lower tolerance, it won't grab as much. So you can see now where it was once a little blurry, we're definitely better. And if your pencil drawing needs, uh, if it you're not really getting as clean of an edge, I would go in with an eraser tool or even with some editing. So using your image adjust and upping the contrast or upping the values. So that way it's easier to uh, select the edge here. Now, wherever it is a little fuzzy, uh, I'm going to leave it alone while I'm erasing. So on the actual layer with the pig, with our beautiful ham pyre, I'm taking my eraser tool. I'm going throughout. And then wherever it gets a little softer, I'm actually going to do that more by hand. So this magic wand selection tool can get a good chunk of what you are looking to paint around, but I don't want to erase the pencil lines that are really light. So instead I kind of have to do this by hand. So I'll be really careful around some of these edges here. And the other thing is like, uh, watching or having the interview with Justin Gerard, it like inspired my love for the coloring aspect again. And I realized that I'm a little rusty because I don't color as much, but there is something fun and kind of magical during the process of coloring when you just, you're experimenting and as you're laying down your palette, uh, when something just clicks, it's like a really cool moment. And for me, a lot of color is just experimenting until something feels right and I know that it's kind of a weird way to teach color but I try to be very intuition based and it doesn't always work out but if you keep playing with it eventually I feel like you will uh, land on something that may surprise you like even with this guy I kind of have a good color palette in mind but who knows where this will take me as I'm sure with a lot of you, when you do color, you're not always uh, going to end up with the same color palette that you set up with. Okay. So now if I command D, if I do the D selection, you can kind of see where I still have the edge on the pencil. So this is where I'm going to do some quick cleanup. Thankfully, during this part, when I'm doing the cleanup on the edge, I can definitely answer some questions here. This will take probably about five minutes if I'm efficient enough with this uh, process. But what's beautiful is then after this, I don't have to worry about the edge uh, pretty much to till the end. I can do all like the stray hairs and whatnot uh, after because I'm just going to be focusing on the base colors and making sure that everything within the the pig is uh, rendered out. Right, let me move this aside so I can see the questions here. Uh, uh, I, I should have music eventually. Oh, there's music playing? No, there's not. Is there really? No, there's not. Are you messing with me? I totally would believe it because I sometimes don't even know when music's playing and when it's not playing. I think it's not playing. Are you guys messing with me? <laughs> oh, it was you, Ella. Oh, see? And I'm so gullible sometimes I fall for things like this. <laughs> Because this has happened where I'll have something in the background and I don't even notice it. Um, David says, dodge and burn tools can help there too. Oh, with the selecting? I've never tried that. Would it help like uh, add the contrast to the values is what you're saying? 
To be honest, that would help me out because with these drawings that I sometimes do where they have a bit of a softer edge or some like gradation edge to it, I would love if I could make this part of my process more efficient. Actually, that's something I do want to talk about too with uh, efficiency. I'll probably do a whole separate live stream about this. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and um, talks about time management and Normally they're for people that aren't artists, but I feel like a lot of it can be very appliable or applicable, appliable, one of the two. And I, I want to kind of collect my thoughts on it and then share it with you guys because I think there's a lot of good information. Um, and it, a lot of it has to do with like, is our to-do list beneficial? And what's the difference between, between being, what was it, like distractions and... Um, uh, was it proaction? There was something where there's definitions between them and how we often veer towards the easy and oftentimes non-essential work over the actual essential work, uh, often because it is seen as it'll be less time consuming and it'll be easier, but in the long run, it actually hurts us. So I, I think I will do a stream sometime on December just on this subject matter, because I feel like a lot of you might also be kind of curious about time management and if you feel like it's not been going great for you for time management, I'll kind of share my thoughts on it, what I do, and hopefully that can help. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, Lauren, how are you doing? I did not think of the vampire idea, so that is all Justin. Gerard. Um, good night, Candor. I know it's super late for you over there. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, David says, yes, Tim, when refining the edge between white negative space and the fuzzy edge of your pencils, use the dodge tool set to highlights will be a better option. You know what? We're going to try learning something new right now. We're going to choose the dodge tool. Highlights. I assume I would do more of a soft edge. Oh. <gasps> Oh, weird. Oh. Everyone, David Peterson, that is the tip of the day. That is great because it still kind of creates that pencil-y texture on the edge rather than it being like a super flat, hard edge. Well, thank you so much. And not that this is really that... Uh, pertaining to the subject matter at hand, but I do think it also is good to always remain in the mindset of a student rather than uh, pretending like you know everything, because I definitely am always open to hearing new tips and tricks on how to do things because I, I've i seen it in the past and in like the example just now where I thought I was doing something efficient and then someone comes in and was like, nope, there's a better way to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I wanna try your way if it will save me time. It always feels weird to me when someone's reluctant to learn new things um, in terms of like their process because I know sometimes it is annoying because you might have like this set routine on how you do uh, your start to finish pieces but it will save you not only time on that piece but then time with every piece moving forward. Why wouldn't you? So thank you David. Um, how much is it for a custom order? As of right now, I'm not having uh, my uh, any freelance or what are those called? Commissions. Uh, I'm, I'm not having any open this year. I'm a little swamped with a, a few different things right now. And admittedly, I took on a small uh, game project that will probably start in January. So my time is going to be very limited. So I think this year I'm actually not going to be opening commissions, but normally I do open them up in December and uh, I, I may open them up next summer, but we'll see. I got really burnt out on doing commissions this year. I even had um, one person, well, I don't, I don't want to gossip or anything, but basically it wasn't the best experience. So I'm choosing to possibly not do them as much anymore ever again. <laughs> Uh, Tigel says, I use the color range selection tool, amazingly handy for selecting sketches. Even the lightest pencil marks can be picked up if you use it correctly. Oh, I did not know that. 
David says it helps when you have to avoid those little bits like those little pig hair or those pig hairs. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure, I mean, for you, this, it's probably a thing that you have to uh, worry about a lot if you're doing a bunch of mice drawing and you want to make sure that you're not losing any of the fur on the edge, those loose strands of hair. Okay, we're almost all the way around our beautiful hampire here. So I guess, yeah, this would be a perfect example of like, if I didn't want to just delete those little stray hairs. I like that this tool also has like a slight um, texture gradient on it. I don't know how to explain it. I'm sure you could do a, a much better job, but uh, I like that it adds that grittiness to the edge. And it's not just like a pure eraser tool. It, it's really hard to explain. This is great though. And our beautiful stink bug is still on my Cintiq. It's drying out. He's cleaning his wings at the moment. Okay, I think we're good. And another thing that I'm doing that I probably shouldn't be doing as much is I'm zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, you can stay pretty zoomed out when doing this process. If there's anything I've learned about efficiency when doing digital work is try to stay zoomed out as long as you can. And that's something that I definitely abused in college. I would be zooming in so close, it would be like this. And then you're doing all these fine little edits and refining and, oh, you've got to make sure that balance light reflects off the small little pore on his cheek on the bottom. And then when you zoom out, you can't even see it. You know, so definitely think about, is this going to be something that's adding to it? Or am I just zooming in to zoom in, to zoom in, to zoom in, to add this detail that I think is going to be important, but when you zoom out, it actually gets lost. And something else I notice when I zoom in too much is I'm not looking at the piece as a whole, especially when I'm coloring, I want to make sure that there's a consistency with it and that the color palette kind of is harmoniously working within the entire piece. Because if you zoom in, you might have like this section might look really good uh, with all the colors, but then as you zoom out, it's like clashing with a lot of contrasts of the hues or saturations around it. So honestly, for a good chunk of the stream, I'm gonna stay zoomed out to about here. I might even move this over to this side. That way we can see more of the cape here. Yeah, so I'll put him, and I, I really won't zoom in much more than this. Uh, Mary says, you probably hear this a lot, but your art is actually magical. <laughs> it inspires me so much. Bless you, dude. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I, I think the process of doing art is so magical for whoever is doing it because there is a process. And sometime during that process, you really enjoy what you're working on, or at least you find, you know what, I'm, I take that all back. I think when you're staring at the blank page, I think as many of you know, that's the hardest part of doing art. And then as you just put the pencil down and as you're finding the lines and you're finding form and shape, whatever it might be, to me, that part is the actual magical part of doing art. Getting lost in a zone while you're working, to me is like magical. I think the end result is cool and it's really awesome to hear that it inspires people and I hope that I can continue like connecting with people in that visual language. Uh, but if any of you are artists, uh, for me, what I feel like is real magic is when you're, you know, you're experimenting and then as you're slowly seeing shapes kind of evolve and come out and you're using your visual eye to pick out uh, what you're going to be creating, I just, I think that's the best part. So to hear that the end result is magical for you guys um, makes it worth it as well. David says, usually when I'm, when I'm adjusting my rendered pencil art, it's not mice, but Hogwarts professors. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you did Hogwarts. Uh, do you, are you like one of the official artists for the books or am I just reaching here? <laughs> Out of the topic, but I'm definitely convinced that you're most definitely a Hufflepuff. You know, I want to be a Hufflepuff so bad, but I took the test. I'm a Ravenclaw. 
I think if you got to know me, I'm a very competitive person by nature. I, I, I do lose with grace. I'm not one of those like, oh, I'm puff, like I, I have to win or else, you know, I'm definitely one of those you either win or you learn type of mentalities. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the coloring part. So for this, we should have, let me change this so you guys can kind of see it better. So normally I like to start my drawings on a neutral gray, as you can see here. It's easier for me to see the colors and a lot of the times it helps kind of keep in balance your hues and saturations. Because if you're working right on uh, white, sometimes it's so stark that your colors will end up being a little lighter or a little darker than you initially meant to. And this is more of a personal thing, so you don't have to uh, do this, but I personally like to work on a neutral gray. Now, the other thing I want to make sure that we're doing this right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the phones. So this is what the image looks like on normal. That's what I wanted to show you. So you can still see, I should have done the erasing on normal and then switched to multiply. I was like, something feels slightly off here. But you know what, I'm gonna work with this. This is like one of those little errors that happens while I stream live, but thankfully I can change it to multiply. As you can see, the whites vanish and I can paint right underneath, which was partially the whole point, but doing the erasing around is so that you can then select it and then paint within. So I am gonna to have to do the other method, unfortunately. Let me zoom out here. Now the other thing while I'm painting is I usually have a bunch of references pulled up right along side of it. So I collected a bunch of little pig images and some scary pig masks. And then I usually just pull a bunch of color references, even if they're not really pertaining to the subject matter at hand. So I really want to give this very like cold and um, kind of spooky undertone color palette. So I don't want it to just be a pink pig. I kind of want it to have this like purpley gray blue uh, tone. And then I want the highlights to be very cool. But then near the face, I want to give more of a, a darker purple. And then around the eyes, maybe red or green to kind of indicate more that this is like a vampire pig. <laughs> I smell a new pin design. Oh, I, maybe, maybe next year. No, nothing official, just doing fan art for fun. You know what? I'm kind of in that same mindset right now where I want to do some fan, like I want to do a Final Fantasy X piece. And then I literally might be starting this, uh, I shouldn't even be saying this, but I might be starting a World of Warcraft character and I kind of want to do a fan art of him. It's like this giant bowl. Uh, if you guys know World of Warcraft, I'm doing the Tauren character and I really want to do this like big beefy cow and he has hair in front of his face. You can't even see him and he's so angry, but he has like one little flower and I like the idea that he's pretty like elf, but strong like bull. And I think it'd just be kind of fun to draw that character. <laughs> yes, I am a, a Ravenclaw. Um, Fem says, can I just say that the stream is perfectly timed? It's been a stressful week for me and my PC is like a volcano since I'm rendering some 3D stuff, so I can't really do anything um, on it. Well, I'm glad that I can provide this uh, time for you. Um, David, did I mess up your process with the dodge? I'm sorry, Tim. You can use the one now. Oh, you know what? Maybe you are right. Do I just turn the tolerance higher, I think? Let me try that. Oh, man, David, I am so, thank you for stopping in today. Okay, so David is right. So I can still select everywhere and I'm just being a silly goose apparently. <laughs> but before I start actually coloring, um, I think it's good to note that when you're collecting references, don't just only select um, ones that pertain to your subject matter. So in this case, obviously I'm drawing a pig and I'm drawing a vampire, but I'm not just finding references of a pig and a vampire. I think it's good to maybe have that as your base, 
but then really think of like the tone or the attitude or the feeling that you want to get and I have a Pinterest board just of like different color palettes that give me different feelings, whether it's more of like cool or scary or uh, timid or angry or passionate or whatever it is. And then I just grab those images and those become more of my base for my color reference than the actual uh, real references that I'm basing the drawing upon. Uh, Ella says, have you heard of Pure Ref, it's a really good program for references and it's free unless you want to give something extra for the creators. I have not. I might have to look into that. <laughs> it's good David is here to help this silly goose. I, I am clearly messing up left and right. Yeah, Final Fantasy X to this day is still my favorite game of all time. Although I will say this year I played the game uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. Best game I've played this year by far. And it's only like a two and a half hour experience uh, but I think it is excellent I think it is um, beautiful storytelling and honestly I kind of want more games that don't focus so much on um, just combat and violence and action because in contrast to that I played Last of Us 2 and I had to stop halfway through and then watch on YouTube uh, someone stream the rest of it and then the cutscenes because it was just so violent that I actually felt a little uncomfortable playing it uh, especially there's one point where you, I mean, this is a little graphic, so for everyone who doesn't want to hear it, but basically you stab a pregnant woman in the neck and you like kind of watch her bleed out. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm 31 now. I'm just not in that mindset anymore where I'm like wanting to play a game about that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's color this bad boy. Let's go, Porker. So like David said, uh, you can still actually select it. And all I did was I changed the tolerance when you do the selection tool. At the very top, I know you can't see it on the actual stream, but it's right on this top menu bar, or the second menu bar. And the lower your tolerance, the more, or the, the higher the contrast will be. So in this case, it is even selecting the very, very light pencils because I chose two as my tolerance. So in this case, I usually like to paint uh, dark to light. Um, this is just a technique I've pulled. I know in the makeup industry, it's actually opposite. They do light to dark. And it's basically just personal preference. But for me, I'm gonna do uh, some dark to light. Oh, that's right. You wanna make sure when you select it, you're selecting the outside, and then you gotta go to select and inverse. So before you were selecting basically the background, and now when you inverse it, you select uh, what's went within. So now you can see it'll only color the pig. But I don't want to do that dark of a purple. And sometimes when I'm starting like this process, I'll just kind of throw colors down and see what I'm feeling. The one thing I do want to say with when you start color is try not to commit to anything uh, too early. I think having the attitude of this could change uh, and at this early of a stage, I think it's the best attitude to have because uh, there might be something better that you're limiting yourself from reaching because you're like, oh, well, no, this is step one and I can't, I can't mess with that and I can't change the color process. Uh, you absolutely can. I think my best color works have literally come from me experimenting and trying different uh, a palette. So even this, I'm committing with this like blue and purple pig, but not really because I'm going to be doing some color balancing and um, some little editing here and there, and who knows what we'll end up with. Oh, well, thank you, Lucas, for subscribing. Now I'm going to be taking some notes from the realistic uh, or from an actual pig, and I know that the bellies are usually a little lighter. I might add just, uh, just a, a touch of the pink. And my favorite thing to do, if you guys haven't noticed from my pencil drawings, is I love adding contrast with like really dark against really light um, in certain little areas of the image. So for me, like this area in between the two legs and uh, the belly is really fun to draw for me because you know there's going to be heavy contrast. Same thing with the eyes here. 
you know that they're going to have some really heavy contrast. And then the cheek, I can really flesh out because at that point you're just rendering a form and that's just going to be a fun time. <laughs> the things that I find fun in life are probably not the things that would be normally listed as uh, a general fun. And the thing that I've really noticed is neutral gray is one of my, or like a grayish tone is one of my favorite colors to paint with because it really does make the rest of the painting or the rest of the colors, I should say, uh, stand out. And, oh, you know what? I'm getting into detailing too soon. I know that the, you know what? I gotta, I gotta stop talking so fast. Take a breath. Maybe, you know what? I'm gonna take a sip of my tea. You can tell when I'm excited about a drawing or a painting because I talk really fast. Sometimes I need to slow it down. Maybe what's what's going on in the chat here? <laughs> David says, if you're a silly goose, Tim, I'm a dodo. <laughs> I would love to be part of this foul uh, club here. Feeling extinct. Oh no, David. Yeah, right. I hear people talk about you all the time. You're such a wonderful artist. Oh, Tim, what are you talking about? I I don't even know. I've talked about so many things at this point. Uh, Tishel says, I love that Peter Cushing painting you have in your ref images. Any idea who made that? I could send it to you on the Discord after. I know I have it saved on Pinterest. Uh, I will send you it. <laughs> okay. I love a good tea in the afternoon. Okay, what I was trying to say is, I know that there are certain areas like the wrinkles and the skin folds, I could easily detail that, but I have to train myself and pull away and look at it as a whole and really lay down the colors first. I get a little too anxious, or not anxious, what's a good word? Maybe overly excited about areas that I know will be fun to paint, and then I jump to those first. Like I know this snout is gonna be so much fun because putting little highlights and making things uh, heavy contrasted in those areas. I've always found a joy when it comes to painting or just art, even pencil drawings. Uh, I know there's gonna be certain areas that I'm gonna really enjoy, but I try to give more of a feeling and a mood first before I just jump in and really dive into the, the fun parts. And something else is you really should be working at on the whole piece all at once. Uh, you don't want to just like zoom in and render just the snout and like no other part of the image is colored because then you'll you'll lose a good chunk of your time efficiency um, doing that. Oh, and like right now I still have the marching ant selection tool around it. What I'm going to do, I should have done this before, but clearly my mind is um, a silly goose today you want to mask it out. So on your layers menu here, it's just the little button down here that looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle. When you click that, you can basically see how we have this uh, secondary layer window that came up. And what it's telling you is anywhere that's white, you can paint in. Anywhere that's black, you cannot. So because we selected it, uh, basically everything that was outside of that selection became black. And that way we can only draw within the pig. And like I said, something I might do is like, let's open up the hue and saturation menu. And this could be done from image at the top as well. Like what happens if he's more of a blue green tone? Actually, I kind of like this. I was just doing this as an example, but now I'm kind of like, you know, I'm kind of digging that. I mean, I don't know if I'm fully digging a green pig. I kind of like the purple with like the green undertone. Maybe just like a little bit. Yeah, like that. Okay, so then let me start. Let me just keep messing around with the base color for a second here. I might add more like this light blue. I've been really attracted to like a very cool blue in um, like highlighted areas on an image. I think I've been looking at a lot of Justin's art recently, and I noticed he does use a lot of cool blues in like certain areas around highlights. And I do find that um, very appealing uh, to the eye. I might make the pig eye though, more of like a, an orange. 
Probably. But I'm going to save that for another layer. And then usually when you lay it down enough colors, I'm no longer color picking from uh, my reference images as much. I'm usually just color picking directly from um, the colors I laid down in the pig. And usually this helps stay consistent as well. I'm gonna add a little lighter tones near some of these highlighted areas. And something I realized about coloring pencil drawings is it's I move so much faster when coloring than I would if I just did a digital painting of the pig. I think having a lot of the details kind of already done for you um, helps me then just focus purely on like the color and the mood that I kind of get off from or that I get a vibe from when looking at it. I think for the wings, we're going to make them a little lighter as well. And obviously, I want gradations everywhere. It's so pleasing to the eye. Love the festive uh, mug. Yeah, I got plenty. Where's my other one? I got plenty of mugs for every season. Um, I try to find like one a year, but I'm at the point where I have so many, I'm like, okay, maybe I need to cool it with the holiday mugs. Okay, right, so now from here, let's go ahead and do some experimenting. So one of my favorite ways to explore color was actually taught to me from Key, Gawky online. And you go to your layers menu on the bottom, there's a circle that's cut in half, click it, and we're gonna do uh, gradient map near the very bottom here. Oh, that's right. This though will select, hold on. If I only want to select my pig, let me see if this works. Because normally I just do it all on um, including the background, but since we're at such an early stage, what you have to do is delete the, you know, let me make sure you guys can see this. Here we go. So you have the gradient map layer and you can see it like what happened uh, and then this little menu pulled up that has a properties tab on it but I deleted the layer or the mask and then to create a new one on the pig you hold command at least on a Mac and then you click the layer mask on the one that you want and you can see how it'll select what that was in that mask and then you mask it out again so now we're only gradient mapping what's within the image so now when you go to the gradient map though, you can see how it has this uh, grady, gradient bar. So you click it, you change the gradient type to noise, and whoa, that is a blue pig, right? But what's fun about this, choose okay, if you turn the opacity down to like 10%, uh, keep it really light, what this will help do is it helps unify a lot of the colors, but obviously, I'm not really digging this blue um, one that it gave us. So you go back to the gradient editor. So you click the gradient bar and just choose randomize. And basically the point of this is you keep randomizing until you land on something where you're like, oh, you know what? I kind of like that. And to be honest, I kind of like that. So I'm going to stick with this. And then what I normally do is I literally merge it down. So I do command D and now we're back in one layer. So it's not that big of a color shift. Let me turn it on and off. Sometimes it can be very subtle, but uh, it's one way of editing color on the go without feeling like you're committing to it. All right, so I'm gonna make a new layer. Once again, select that mask. And now I'm gonna get into more secondary details. So I'm still not doing like fine edging yet. So I'm gonna grab some of these lighter colors. So I'm just gonna give like a slight detail to these wrinkles that are up here. Like I said, I don't want to go in and do like really harsh fine tuning rendering because one, I'll get lost in it and I'll just have so much fun doing that stage. And I like to stay uh, zoomed out and continue to do more of the overall detail. I mean, I wouldn't even call it detail. It's more of just like your flats and whatnot. 
you know what? I don't think I want to have light, uh, this light color inside the snoot. I kind of want more of like a red, maybe. Or maybe I do want a lighter color. Let me see what red would look like. Hmm. So something that you can do if you're kind of debating between a few colors. So I'm going to create a new layer, do the same thing, mask it out. And I'm going to try just like placing down red. And I'll do it pretty harshly. And I'm like, okay, let me see what, you know, the different hues would look like in which direction I think I'll want to take this in. Possibly like a green tone, possibly. So I might think, okay, this is kind of giving me the vibe I want. Let me play around with this. So I'll take that green color. And usually I don't like to have such an isolated color um, like this. I'll try to bleed it into the surrounding area just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot. But I think just to keep the consistency, uh, I like to bring the color throughout the piece, even if it's just a little bit. Uh, you know what? I don't think I am digging that green. I feel like whatever color though I choose, I should also make the eyes kind of that color. Oh, you know what? I don't hate it. I mean, he does look like a sick pig. <laughs> he looks like he's had a cold for at least two weeks. He's just ready to be over it. I'm, I'm sure actually a lot of us with COVID are feeling the same way. We're just, we're just over it. We're ready to um, see people again. Maybe that are blue. What are you guys thinking? More like a green or like a ah. oh, I could see both ways working. You know what? For now, I'll stick with green because I feel like I rarely work with green. And definitely, I'll have glowing eyes, Dina. Uh, absolutely. Fem says, I think you can also hold Alt and hover on the line between the gradient map and the mass piggy, and that should then also be able to affect the color pick if not. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think you're right. Where it has like, uh, I know what you're talking about. I think that's uh, correct. Hey, Jonathan, how are you doing? Interior light in the snoot is quite striking. Oh, you know I'm going to be doing um, a heavy interior light on the snoot. Like, imagine when we get into like more of the highlights when we get like this lighter green. You know what? I am going to stick with the light green. I feel like I rarely work with green, so why not try this? Uh, Tigel says, I found it. The Peter Cushing are made by Ryan Wood. I scoured your giant Pinterest collection. <laughs> Dang, Tigel, you're quick. Uh, the camera covers the toolbar on the left. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'll make sure that these are always able to be seen. Sorry about that. Uh, Jonathan says, or snoot in. What are trotters? Are you talking about his feet? I feel like I should know what that is. Um, possibly. I might make the feet. Well, maybe. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, I'm definitely getting into very, like, concept art world, uh, where I feel like this definitely has that same feel. I mean, I kind of like that. That's kind of cute. Maybe not as strong. Well, like, I definitely want to reflect the light that's coming out of the, the snoot on his arm. So I'll probably do that pretty strong. Uh, David says, uh, red was the right choice. Green looks gross, unless gross is what you're going for. Red said vampire pig. Uh, I know. I uh, I feel like I should go to with red. I know that that's like the color that would make the most sense for a vampire pig. Ah, oh, but I rarely work with green. I guess that's why I wanted to work with green. You know what? I'll try I'll try doing both ways. Because I think when it comes to art, I'm not like opposed to trying anything. So let me see what a good red would look like. 
I'm also weirdly specific about reds because red was my favorite color for like the longest time. So I, I love like a deep, rich blood red. Yeah, are, are we feeling the red better? Gosh dang it, David. I think you're right with this one again too. I feel like the green one definitely gave more of like a sickly... Um, I don't even know what video game this character would be in. But it definitely gave like he would be the one like shooting acid out of his mouth or something. Uh, where I, I know that this one does read more as Vampire Pig. But the beautiful thing about uh, art is I feel like you can do both. I might just do both versions. I could I could even do a blue version. You know, we could have a rainbow version. Why not? <sighs> okay. So then that one, and I'm not one of those people that like name layers or I always combine them into one, which I know is sacrilegious to a lot of people, but I actually don't mind um, treating it more like a painting. But for now, I like to throw a bunch of layers. And then when I get to a point where I'm satisfied with the, what it looks like, I'll merge them all down into one. Okay, so I'm going to go back in and I'm going to look at more of where I can add some of these secondary details. I can only imagine when I post this on Instagram because I just posted like this big uh, marketing. It's like very big and gold and uh, gaudy and... Uh, it has like the sense of like, oh, beautiful and home for the holidays. And then vampire pig. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I also like to have, I don't know if it reads that well on the Twitch stream, like this little transition between this yellow brown color to the body back here where it's more gray. I like this little purple highlight, little hot spot, if you will. Oh, he's such a cutie. I, if you guys don't know, I, I love pigs. I actually thought I was going to be getting a pet pig uh, for the longest time in my life. When I did a lot of research on it, though, I actually found out the area that I live in allows for a pot belly pig. But I found out they're um, borderline more needy than a dog, or at least from what I read. And I just I do not have the time uh, to take care of a pet that's more needy than a dog. That's why cats have become my new best friend because they basically take care of themselves. As long as you do the litter box and food, they're good. Oh, also, this is a good example of um, how where you're laying down the color can imply a secondary detail. So you can see before and after, see how now it looks like there's a wrinkle in between his belly and the leg? It's really not that um, difficult besides uh, laying down a darker color and then doing a lighter one in the middle of that and it just creates the illusion of a wrinkle and the best part is like close up you know nothing special but when working far away you can see how it gives that impression that's the other reason i like working a little further away is i can see how things will read better especially when they're finished oh i wonder should i do red in the ears oh hmm I am having way too much fun with this porker. <laughs> this I don't, you know, when I when I did the pencil rendering of him, I knew that I was having fun, but I didn't think I would have this much fun coloring him. He's just so easy. It's basically a potato with legs, and uh, rendering it is just like doing gradients and uh, wrinkles everywhere, which I love adding to. Um, these type of pieces. I think I will make the wings a little darker. Hmm. Yeah, he's looking cute. Oh, what are you guys saying here? Uh, oh, let me scroll up. Yeah, green was more zombie. That was the what I was going for. Or they need a flu. Uh, um, here he says green and the pink and the pig look good to me. I might add little touches of green here and there, but I do think it did read more as zombie, which I could do a vampire pig and then a zomb zombie pig. 
I also have like a horde of different um, Halloween tropes, but in pig version. Oh, now you're saying go with your gut, David. But ah, you were right. I feel like the red does read more as vampire pig. Let me let me look at it one more time. Maybe we should compromise and just not even do either of those colors and do like a yellow or something. It's just tough because I do think this reads more as zombie pig, where this reads more as vampire pig. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me let me take a good look. You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe we'll try green. And it, I am bordering on the vamp or on the zombie side, but let's just see where it goes. And if it ended up being like a zombie vampire pig, I guess I'm okay with that. The green reminded me of a bit of a witch standing over a cauldron. A chunky rainbow piglet. Uh, David says, out of curiosity, why do you stream on YouTube rather than Twitch? No judgments. I'm looking for your pros, cons. Uh, the main thing was I noticed my YouTube channel was growing. Um, a lot of it had to deal with I don't want to have a bunch of different platforms that I feel committed to. I was trying to do like a, a clean sweep. But the the main reason was I noticed Twitch, the subscriptions, they were taking 50%, whereas on YouTube they take much less. I think it's like 20 um, compared to the 50. And then what I really like is that YouTube will automatically upload all the streams onto my own page. And a lot of these streams you can also monetize um, afterwards. So for me, it's it's kind of like a personal preference thing, but I, I do like keeping everything in one platform. Oh, I do like that, actually. And uh, I noticed that with uh, YouTube, it's really easy to, when you announce a stream coming up, so like for this one, I announced it like a week or, yeah, like a week ago, and then it'll show up on people's feeds, and then they can like set reminders, and I just feel like there's more of an audience for people going to YouTube than there are for Twitch when it comes to art. Um, I think if you're like a gamer, I do think Twitch still is the best one to go to. Uh, I don't think it's quite caught on as much with uh, the um, a YouTube, but I do see a lot of Twitch people that will upload stuff to YouTube or at least like highlights and stuff to YouTube. Um, so I don't know, it's just something I've noticed as I've been uh, exploring different streaming platforms. I mean, I used to work with livestream.com and then I did, uh, I think I did strictly Google Hangout. I know Tijel's in the chat. He could probably remember what I used to do. And then I, I thought I was going to do Picardo, but then I switched to Twitch and Twitch was great for a really long time. And then I switched to YouTube when I left my full-time job, um, just to keep things all, uh, in one place. Mm-hmm. Have a happy holidays, everyone. Oh gosh, there's so many comments. Okay, here, let's see what we got. Jonathan, vampire pig could have had some slight gold glitter on his shoulders. Haha, <laughs> just left the bar. Come on now. Fem says you can make the little piggy fit in with the big and gold on Instagram by making it pig and gold. Maybe he has beautiful gold accessories or cape. I mean, I kind of like that he's far away from all of my gaudy gold nonsense. Okay, so I will start doing some of the detailing parts, because where are we at? Oh, we're only an hour in? Oh my gosh, guys. I thought I'd been talking for like two and a half hours here. <laughs> Time flies when you talk a mile a minute. Okay, so I'm going to start doing uh, some of these minor details. So I'm making my brush size smaller and I'm going in I'm just punching some areas and then here's while I will actually start doing more of like the um, cutting in some areas so an example of cutting for those of you who don't know what cutting is or maybe this is a term I made up and I think it's real so basically like you can see this back roll that he has right under his armpit here so Let's say we want some of the darker color here, so like right there, but we don't want it to appear on the belly. I take an eraser tool with a hard edge and I'll literally cut right up against that, that roll. And that way it creates more of this um, curved value effect. 
And usually what people do, so like let's say we want to do the whole arm, they'll do the top arm first. So we'll do that one and cut it. And then this one and then cut it. So if you do it right, which I kind of did, you can see how it adds more of like that realism um, curve to it. So it has more of a, a depth to it. But I don't think I want that to be as deep here. Also where there's a lot of areas that get a little muddy, so you can tell like right where the cape is like under his chin area. I know that area, I want to then um, pull out some of the lighter color so that it doesn't read as muddy. So I'll just literally Alt, which is the color picker, choose the lighter color, make my brush smaller, and then bring some of those lighter colors down. Like that. And I honestly think at this point, I'm just gonna start having fun and I'm gonna go throughout the, the pig and just start detailing. So this is pretty fun for me here. Uh, Tommy says, if, or, if you weren't streaming, do you like to have noise or music, movie, et cetera, while you work or nice and quiet? Uh, I definitely like to have some kind of noise in the background. So I typically listen to music or I watch movies. I try to watch a new movie every day. Uh, I love film. It's like my favorite thing to talk about. Um, but sometimes it's hard because if it's a movie I, I genuinely want to see, I can't draw and do it because I won't be as engaged. So normally I'll watch things that I've already seen in the background or like a movie that I know probably isn't going to be that great, but I still want to at least see it or like, you know, give it a, a shot. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I like to listen to music. Lately, it's been a lot of like Christmas jazz. I'll have like a 10 hour playlist and just kind of go. But if I'm drawing like sword play, let me show you guys. <laughs> Actually, there's this new illustration I'm working on. Um, and it's for my illustrated novel. And it's taking me so long because I have spurts of doing it. But I was recently working on Grizzy. And uh, her, she is interesting too as I'm working on her because as I'm going through and I'm painting this, I'm trying to create a lot of these like fun, interactive color uh, moods and washes. But you can see how my edges aren't as, um, they don't have as much texture, especially looking at the pig that we were just doing. And I think I realized I really want to incorporate that same level of like texture into my color pieces as well. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, I have a playlist set for each of my characters in my book. And when I draw them or I paint them, I'll, I'll put up that playlist so I can get into that same vibe that I feel this character is in. And Grizzy, she's like this old uh, grizzled uh, veteran of, um, she's a captain of a ship, but she lost her husband. And she's been on search for him for like two years. And the whole thing with her and what the image I wanted to create is that she feels really alone or kind of out of place. And she's at this bar with all these young people, but no one's giving her the time of day. And she has all these stories and she's full of interesting um, conversation, but she doesn't feel heard anymore. And that's kind of the concept I want to explore with her. And especially as she's on this quest to find her husband um, throughout Swordplay. So I created a playlist that kind of fits that same mood and narrative uh, for her. So yeah. And going back to the pig, I think there's just something with having some of that pencil texture. And I'm sure even David, who's watching, he has a lot of the pen um, texture. And I, I do like seeing some of the traditional mix with uh, digital. Uh, let's see here. Tigel says, it was Google Live, which doesn't exist anymore. Ah, see, I didn't even know that. Happy holidays. I had a really long dream that you were crying at a con and I had to console you. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing pretty well. If I cried at a con, it would be in the bathroom. <laughs> but honestly, I've never cried at a con. I did cry when someone else cried 
um, looking at my art. It was just, it was a, a fun little moment, but I haven't cried just on like being sad or something. Jonathan says, so clever, love that narrative setup. I'm so excited to release my Grizzly work. Uh, I'm hoping to have it done this December. I might even do a live stream just for her and then hear like feedback from you guys because if there's something I'm realizing the older I get, I kind of like art, um, especially with stories that I really care about. I kind of like hearing others' opinion about the the story that I'm creating or you know the piece that I'm currently creating. If there's something that could be better, why not hear like what other people have to say and who knows, maybe it'll actually be better than my initial idea. I think letting go of a lot of the ego and the pride that comes <clears throat> from like early 20s of, oh, I'm, I can draw anything and I, I, I'm gonna prove my worth to the art world. I think it's good to let that go by the time you're, I mean, I'm 31 now, but I feel like it's really helped me take critique and advice from anyone, um, including my mom, who is probably the least artistic person I know. But one time she called me out on one of my paintings and to this day, I still think about that, that she was right. There was an area in my piece that didn't make sense logistically because uh, it had more of like a realism rendering to it. And she called me out on it and I, I changed it because she was right. So never dismiss someone else's idea because they're not an artist or um, you don't think that they have as much experience or knowledge on the, the matter because everyone looks... Uh, at art on some level, even if it's just looking at nature, whatever they're looking at. And if there's something that they can critique you on by looking at your image, why not just hear them out? For all you know, they could give you the best advice you've ever heard. I mean, even with like earlier in the stream, David gave me a better way at selecting and erasing the edge of a pencil drawing. And it was, and I'm gonna adopt that from now on. And the more that you adapt that mentality of, I'm just gonna, um, you know, follow my, my intuition. But then when someone gives me a good piece of advice, I'm going to listen to that. I'm going to um, apply that to my work. I'm going to give them some rosy cheeks. Maybe not that rosy, though. I feel like that's distractingly rosy. He's not that jolly. I mean, he's a happy pig, but he's not like Santa happy. Okay. Oh, gosh. It's so fun watching this thing come together. That's why as soon as I was finished penciling it, I knew I was going to have fun coloring it. Now, this is another good example. I'm sorry I'm talking like a mile a minute. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, can you just take a breath? Um, but I'm just so excited. So looking at this piece, you would think that the eyes are really saturated in a hot spot. But when I select and color pick it, you can see it's just a little above halfway on the saturation mark. Uh, and... Well, I guess it's more of like three quarters, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little lighter and a little more saturated and then watch what happens. You can see how that eye, actually, I'm going to even go even further. You can see how now it really starts to pop out. And the best way that you can see if your values uh, in your colors are working is I normally do do this. I should have done this at the beginning of the stream but I'm being a silly goose today. So I make a new layer at the very top. I change it to uh, saturation. There we go. And then I change it to zero basically, or minus 100. And then that way, if you ever need to quickly check your values, uh, you can do it through here. And I actually like him as a grayscale pig. He's pretty cute. Um, but I usually do this on my color stuff so that I can see are my values working well underneath the visage and mirage of hue and saturation. But yeah, I like that. But if I really want to make my eyes more of like a pop, let me show you the difference between the eyes that we added. And then let's say we added like white almost. When you go back to that hue saturation, see how they pop out way more? So in a grayscale drawing, this would work probably better but with um, the color, you can see how not as well because I, I like having some of the color read in the eye as it illuminates out. <laughs> Jonathan says, pretty sure I remember a video stream from way back when you were first exploring Grizz. So roll on December. I, I do think I'll do a stream in December on her. And like I, I was, you know what? No, I won't reveal too much about Grizzy. I'll save that for the stream. 
But it is, you know, when you get just get excited about a character and you're like, oh, I just, I think this will be a really good uh, character that people will relate to or connect with on some level. I think Grizzy will weirdly be the, that character um, in swordplay for a lot of people. And I think the older I get, the more that I kind of relate to Grizzy on certain things. At least feeling like out of touch or um, like you have less and less people to connect with. Uh, because of either your age or stature or whatever it might be, I definitely can relate to that on some level. So, so now I'm in the, like I said, the detailing stage. So I'm going to just zoom around the pig and add these little details, so like little highlights on the little nips here, <laughs> the little highlights on his hooves. I don't want to over highlight though either. I feel like I do get caught in this. Um, this kind of troublesome stage where if I over highlight everything, it kind of loses the punch and effect of a good highlight. I feel like adding highlights on materials that really represent where there should be highlights. So anywhere that's like wet or shiny or metallic uh, or more of a hard edge, usually those will have more of a shiny surface. So like his tusks, I'll probably add a bit more of this highlight. And then the the uh, little hoof nails, or what are the hooves? Hoof, hoof nails? That can't be right. I think it's just hooves. And his eyes and then his snoot. Those are the areas that I'm going to be kind of focusing on the most here. Now, something fun that we can do is the highlights on the top of the nose, rather than just making them also like this lighter green, which we could, but I'm going to take more of like if he was flying in the moonlight or something, and I'm going to make these highlights more of like a neutral gray with like a hint of blue. And you know what? If I hate it, we can change it. But I think this is one of those times where, you know what? Why not explore what would it look like if he had this highlighted moon above him? Oh, you know what? This is too blue, though. I can go more like purpley. Let me redo that. So then if you do this right, it should kind of read as like a wet surface. And it's reflecting the light back because of that uh, wetness. See, I think I over highlighted that a little bit. There we go. So then something at the end, after I do this detailing stage, I'll actually work on top of my pencil work and that will grab or be able to cover some of the areas that I think are distracting. <laughs> I just, can't. I'm imagining the light emitting from his nose. This is just so silly. Carry some of these maybe secondary glow colors. Like orange is usually a good complement to like a glowing yellow. <laughs> I think the other reason why I'm enjoying this so much is I just I really like pigs. I think they're cute. Hmm. <laughs> So then like on his cheek here, this is a perfect place to add like a good amount of uh, value and shading and um, really make it look round. There we go. 
So you can see as we're adding the detail, it's like punching some areas of it up. And it's like pulling your focus definitely toward the face. But I, I want to keep adding these details everywhere. Now, if I really wanted to add high contrast, like here, I would also make it really light as well. But you see how that would pull the attention then more toward the body? So I do want to keep the lighter, lighter colors, that heavy contrast more near the face, and then use it very subtly in other areas around the body. There we go. Um, Them says, I love that. It never hurts to listen to others. You can still choose afterwards if you want to act on it. Absolutely. Uh, hey, Roman says, hello, Tim. Can I ask you to quickly show your layer alignment, please? I just came here and I am really interested in how you painted this piece step by step. Yeah, thankfully I've actually kept the, the layers because normally I don't, admittedly. So we started with the pencil sketch. Well, technically we started like this. I added a neutral gray. And then we added uh, a very slight overall soft edge brush uh, shading everywhere. And I added just a little bit of the lightness to kind of pull the area more toward the upper body. And then I focused on like the, the color, the one that would really make the, the rest of the image pop. Because I like to play with more neutrals when we start out and then add more saturated colors as I work through, through and through. So now I'm at the stage where I'm like really, you know, you know, getting in there and doing more of the fine editing. But very, very soon though, I'm going to be doing another color pass and then see if possibly we might want to change it again. Because like I said, I'm, it's, I'm very low committal when it comes to uh, my color choices. I could change it any time. <laughs> So then like if I want to add more secondary wrinkles, like we did up there, grab this lighter color. You can see how pushing it against this section here will make it feel more bloated or more toward the viewer. And then same with here, adding that highlight underneath the skin kind of fat roll. And it's going to then push out the area in front of it. So a lot of painting at this stage is literally just making something either look more 3D, which I do have a habit of doing that. Not, It's not always the best way, honestly. I think there's some really great color artists out there that you know, have very fantastical lighting and they don't care if it reads as realistic or uh, if it has form or whatnot. Uh, but I definitely know myself, I know I'm one of those artists that do like the process of adding form. So I am gonna be adding that uh, throughout here. And something I should be doing more is flipping the image. So we're gonna do flip canvas. Well, that is happening. Take another sip of tea. Ah. Hey, he's looking pretty good. Okay, so for a second, I'm gonna keep them this way. So now this is where it becomes more blasphemy. So I'm gonna put all of these layers, the coloring layers in a group duplicate it, turn the first one to hidden, and then merge them all into one layer. So now it's literally one layer of painting. Now I know that this is not, I don't even recommend this necessarily. I just feel like this is the way that I've kind of grown to work with painting. Even the Grizzly illustration you just saw, one layer. And I keep doing that where I'll make a bunch of new layers and if I like how it looks, boop, collapse it into one. So now from here, I just want to do a quick color test. Let's just see what it looks like with different color variations. And normally, the reason I don't like the hue saturation at this point is usually it'll, oh, actually, I kind of like that, though. <laughs> to double back on what I just said, I actually kind of like that. You know what? I do like the more orangey tone. 
Oh, absolutely. We're going to stick with that. Um, but normally, as you can see, it gives kind of like a wash of just one color. But every now and then, it'll do this, where it adds kind of like a slight tinting that I really like. I love this. You can see before and after. See, now we're going back into the territory David wanted initially, which is more of that vampire pig, um, which I do like. Let me flip him back here. Yeah, I like that orange too, right? And weirdly, I feel like orange has slowly become my favorite color. It was honestly red for like seven years, and then it was yellow for like four. And yellow, I loved yellow, especially like a good sunflower, more of like a, a bolder yellow. Not like neon yellow, like I'm not really a fan of that at all. But then this summer, I just really liked orange. Uh, and I, I just, I don't know, there's something about it that's like warm, but also um, has like a disposition to it. <laughs> Orange has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? I love this. Uh, that orange is just perfect because it, it does, it gives off like that Halloween vibe. It's purple and orange and it's a vampire pig. Like what could be better? Um, so something I'm gonna try though, is I'm gonna make a copy of it, hide that layer, that way, if I ever need to come back to it, I know that I have one in reservation. But I'm going to try that gradient map filter that we did earlier. And the same process, delete layer mask, copy it, and then see what comes up when we try it. And there we go. What a beautiful pink pig. I'm going for realism, apparently. So change it down to like, let's try 14, 13%. So even with this like crazy hot magenta gradient map, you can see the difference before and after, which there's a part of me that kind of likes it, but I kind of like this very like undead fleshy, uh, desaturated skin tone. If I was doing something more like cutesy, I would probably would stick with this hot pink. But since we're going for a hampire, we're going to try a different palette here. Ooh, see what that looks like on and off. See how that kind of unifies the colors? I feel like it unifies it though too much where I don't want it to. Like I do like the orangeness of it. Ooh, see how that like adds this more like sulky pig. You know what though? Yeah, I still like the original better. So sometimes I'll sit here and I'll literally like randomize for a long time. Oh, there we go. See, sometimes you'll land on something where it just, it makes sense for the mood. So what I like about this gradient map, uh, the one that we picked, or the one that I picked, sorry. <laughs> this is not a democracy with color picking apparently. Um, it adds more of a cool tone to the body and that makes the warms in the face look even more hot. And I, I, I like that, so we're gonna stick with that. Okay, I might do one more layer of coloring underneath of the pencil sketch, and then to end uh, the stream off, I'll probably do one on top and just do detailing everywhere again. And we'll call it quits. So thank you guys for joining me on the stream. This is actually, this is really fun. It could be because I'm in a really good mood, but I also feel like I did miss doing these streams and talking with you guys live because um, I learned things um, by doing these. Oh, what if I gave him a little eyeball? Whoa, wait, wait, do you see that? Can you even see this? Wait, what if I gave him like... <laughs> Are we yay or nay on that? More anime. Ooh, I don't know. There's something about that I actually kind of like. I mean, I guess we could do glowing. That would be like the main option. Maybe I'll do like a small BDI like right in the center of that. So you can barely see it, but it's there.
or glowing blind eyes. Yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe I will add that back. Hold on. Because I, I was kind of digging that too. <laughs> I'll probably play around with a few different eye shapes though. So because a character like this has so much focus on the face, I try not to rush areas like the eye uh, because that's probably where you're going to be directing a lot of the attention in a piece like this. You know what? I think I like that. I think that's cute. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with it though a little bit to figure out the shaping. I don't know if I want like a larger eye. Oh, you know what? I do think I kind of like the larger one. All right, we're gonna stick with that. So then in some areas, like I know I want the belly to be a little more smooth, like the pig, but just to imply like maybe those little finer hairs, you know, I'll do more of like that scratchy application with my brush. I feel like honestly the horn should be reflecting more of the light. This is where bounce light becomes more of a thing. So I definitely want more of a light kind of emitting around the snoot. I also gotta be careful though because this can look really digital really fast. I like to play with colors that are a little more on the spectrum of what can be achieved traditionally, but I always stray a little further from that. Oh, thank you, Anna B, for subscribing. And I'm going to try to reserve myself here and not go full, full in on that. Give some highlights to these skin wrinkles around here. I'll probably just do like a little bit of cleanup work after the stream ends. Because I do like uh, to walk away from a painting like this and then come back either in an hour or even the next day and be like, oh, I totally didn't even see how bad this area looks over here or whatever it might be. Sometimes I get so preoccupied that uh, it is good to walk away from your art from time to time because when you come back at it with fresh eyes, some things might become like glaringly obvious that's wrong, but since I'm so, you know, here with the drawing here and now, um, sometimes you don't always pick up even very easy to see mistakes, but you're just too, you're too involved at that point. You're just, you're in it to win it. You know what? I feel like I did over highlight this area too. I'm going to make this a bit darker. Yeah. Possibly even his whole head. Hold on. Uh, maybe not that much, but maybe a little bit. <laughs> this thing is so silly. It is funny that I do have these um, changes from being like very pretty Mooka aesthetic art, and then I'll do. Um, vampire pig because I find different joys from doing both like I can find a lot of joy from doing um, this because I think you can have more fun with like rendering big uh, voluptuous shapes and um, more comical exaggeration of proportions and whatever it might be 
Hi, we're gonna take the, the big step. I'm gonna draw on top of my pencil work now. And we're gonna call this one done, my little porker. Oh, let's see here. A little black eye would be creepy. I don't know if I want it to be that creepy. I could try it though, but I have a feeling I, I don't want it to be that creepy. I mean, there's parts of it I actually do like, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the glowing eyes. John says also maybe test cold desaturated blue white on the eye to align it or specular. I guess I could give it a little little specular highlight. Um, I I never try to use pure white, so I'm gonna use just under it. Give it that like glossy marble texture. Oh, he looks so sad now. <laughs> I feel like he looks like he's been crying. Oh, buddy, it's not gonna be okay. You are a vampire pig. Oh. I mean, I kind of like that. Let me see before and after. I think I over-rendered this part, but I do kind of like the glossy eye. We'll see, I might keep that. Tizzle says, or the eyes being all black and then just one tiny yellow dot in darkness. Yeah, see, I think I, I kind of like that too, but there's part of me that does really like the, the glowing eye attribute. A very subtle glowing eye. Ella says, I love how much uh, you, much like myself, don't zoom in and out most of the time, but instead get closer, far away from the screen. Uh, oh yeah. you. <laughs> I'm sure I've done it throughout the whole stream, but I ever do like this and I come back and <laughs> it's because I'm looking at the, the drawing and I don't want to zoom away from it. I think because I do that with pencil work, if I'm holding like a drawing, I'll like look, I'll be drawing really close and I'll like literally physically hold it apart from me and I'll, you know, do that. So maybe it's just like a weird habit that I've acquired from traditional. Oh yeah, but now we are on top of the pencil layer. So literally anything that we draw will be on top. So this will be like the final detailing stage and then um, our little porker will be done. I do like to imply a more like little texture. So I'm gonna do a bunch of these random striations of hair. I don't even know how well that comes up on the stream. go because sometimes I also have a bad habit of making everything look a little too soft everywhere so I've kind of taught myself to punch um, certain texture areas with like that scratchy type movement See, so, you know, what's nice is I can then color over some of the pencil art here where I wasn't able to get the color I wanted because the pencil was so dark. And because the pencil layer is set to multiply, I really wouldn't be able to um, get like a very a bold color that could be seen. Hmm. Some highlights for the lip. <laughs> this poor little buggy. Sometimes I'll lay out the lighter value and then kind of use my eraser tool to cut into it. I mean, a lot of what I'm doing now is just um, like rendering detail of the paint. 
like if I want to add another wrinkle, actually, here's a perfect example. Like that one smile wrinkle, uh, I want to add one more on top of it. So usually, or just literally laying down the lighter edge above it, see how it creates another wrinkle on top of it? Um, so there's a lot of like minor details you can add really, really quickly. Hmm. And to make sure we don't lose that, I want it to be too smooth. So then I'll take a lighter color and then kind of draw some hairs. And usually I'll try to go in the direction that the hair naturally would be going in. Then every now and then I'll really like cut. Um, an area of contrast. So like right where the cape is tied under his neck, I'm adding this lighter color so that it really adds this level of contrast. I don't want to do too much because I do get into the bad habit of over contrasting areas that shouldn't be the area of focus. There we are. And then something else that I've noticed, especially with Justin Gerard's work, uh, as I've been like studying it, is he does a lot of dotting. Um, it probably is just a brush effect, but I do like that it gives like this very 80s uh, glittery look. There's certain movies that have it, and I feel like they're all from the 80s. It's like The Secret of Nim or uh, legend like they have this sparkle and it's this very natural looking sparkle it doesn't look obviously at that time they didn't really have the 3d technology um, to do it so they recreated it in certain ways and i love um, the look of that sparkle so at the end of this drawing i'll probably add a bit of that sparkle as well and it's like this little glow i can't even, i don't even know how to describe it properly but i i love 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 it and if any of you have ever seen the very specific movie called Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night, they use that effect a lot. And it's one of my favorite uh, kids' movies because it is horrifyingly scary. I, I do not even know how they call it a, a kids' movie. It is nightmare-inducing, even for adults. Um, go check it out. <laughs> okay. So I love how soft we rendered the belly is. And I don't want to like over highlight it because um, I'll probably add a little bit, but I like that there's a good amount of just nothing because there's so much complication happening in the face that by contrast, having a lot of this kind of empty playing field on his belly, uh, it just, it's a nice uh, complement to how busy the rest of the drawing is. Give some more wrinkles to this little leg, this little tootsie. And even um, back here, I try not to have things be like pure black. Uh, I think it actually looks better darker, but maybe just a little lighter. There we go. I'll probably post the finished um, vampire uh, sometime next week. I'm going to let my sale run and keep the marketing kind of focused on that. Uh, that way I can obviously uh, pay my rent and things. <laughs> and I don't want uh, distraction. As much as I love the pig, I'm going to keep it more focused on my, um, my Etsy and stuff. You know what, I don't even want to add too much color up here because I like how desaturated it is, like I was saying before. So instead, I'll grab this very light gray and I'll add more of like those hairs going across. I 
Also, thank you guys for coming to the stream today. I probably don't say it enough, but I really do appreciate um, when you guys are chatting and I don't know, it's just a good time. Special thanks to my mods who have been uh, very good and always so pleasant to, um, to talk with. They help run the Discord that you can actually join below and keep the conversation going. And right now we have a secret Santa going for it. I don't want to add too much rim lighting on the bottom though. And then like right where the fur like overlaps the hooves a bit, I'm going to grab this blue color, make it a little lighter. See how it all it takes is like a few strokes. It kind of gives that impression that the hair is overlapping the hoof. So just by adding a few stray hairs, it implies that the whole leg has that hair look to it. And implications, honestly, with, uh, or implying detail with digital art, I think is the best way to go. I have to remind myself that all the time because I get lost in the detailing. Oh, what a cute little duber. Maybe I'll add some details to the cape though too. Make it look a little more refined. Uh, and like I was saying earlier in the stream, I'll probably do a more like organization and time management stream sometime next week. Um, if not the week after, but I I think, well, it depends on my schedule with, uh, I want to make sure that shipping goes well, because we're already getting a lot of orders and I don't want to just dump that all on Josh and uh, my cousin Jake. I want to help out with it. Oh, well, you know what I'm gonna do with this cape? Hold on. So you can see how like here it gets a little, a little muddy. There's not a lot of fun areas going on. You know, I'm gonna make a new layer just for this area. So because this cape probably wouldn't be casting that much of a shadow, actually at all on this area of the pig, I'm gonna lighten this up. Maybe let it get a bit darker near the back. And then underneath, I'm gonna grab this lighter orange color. I'm gonna edge up right against that line art. And then for this cape, See how I add just a few little areas of highlight? Then all of a sudden it got it has a little bit more of a texture to it now. So before and after. So you can see how it's like a little effect, but it can do um, quite a bit. Yeah, I'm feeling good about our little porker here. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably do like just some more of this fine editing um, and detail everywhere. Then I think he'll be done. Maybe make the cape a bit darker here too. So this is a good area where, you know what, I'm just gonna mask it out and darken that up. And the other thing that's kind of weird is on this whole piece, I didn't use multiplayer, multiply or overlay. Uh, it's just all from color picking and uh, the different little color editing options I showed you guys. Because the reason I like avoiding overlay and multiply as much as I can uh, when it terms of coloring, because I feel like it does make it look 
more digitally punched, which isn't bad, but I do like my work having more of a traditional look to it when I color things. Not always. Sometimes I do like to explore that like very saturated and high contrast. But let's say if I did do an overlay layer, it'd be really easy to make his eyes really pop in that snoot pop like that. Which is, I mean, it, it's fine. We can tell before and after how it looks like it could have been painted with watercolor or even with um, colored pencils or something. But as soon as you start to add like overlay effects or lighting effects, um, it does give it more of a digital feel. Like I said, it's not bad. It just depends on like what end result you're looking to achieve. He is a hot pig. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Those are the hottest eyes. So you can see before and after. So, I mean, it does work. It, I do think it does look better in terms of like contrast, obviously. But normally I'll then turn the overlay layer down just a bit. But while we're here, might as well just see what would happen if we overlay and hotspot some of the body. See what that looks like on and off. Yeah, I like it. I know. It works. Maybe. Maybe you guys are like, no, that, does, that definitely does not work. Someone tell them. Well, something kind of fun. I guess I can make the cape more of like a... Yeah, no, I don't like the wing like that. Okay, I think we're going to call this one finished soon. So if there are any last minute questions you have or comments you want to discuss, go ahead and ask them now and then we're going to call this one quits. And I'll try whenever I do have the next stream, I'll try to schedule it at least a few days in advance. Um, I'll try, I'll never try to do it like day of and just randomly announce it. Um, I know some of you like to you know, have a schedule and um, maybe not be as spontaneous. So I will definitely keep um, tabs on announcing it sooner than later. Oh, Jonathan, you're you're wonderful. Big love from Scotland. Always great to catch these. Them says, thank you, Tim. I'm always a little more happy when I get a stream notification. Such a fun and happy place to hang out. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And same back to you. Actually, it's perfect. I'm literally almost done with my tea. This was like a tea's worth of a stream. And after this, me and Josh are gonna get Subway. I haven't eaten yet today, and it's already almost four o'clock. We did. I did stay up really late last night, though, so it's not like I woke up at a reasonable hour. Oh, I hate the hot spotting I just did. That looks terrible. Yeah, I think I, I think we're gonna call this one pretty much done. And I'll probably do more of these like little coloring um, streams because I think a lot of you enjoy seeing the process of color. Uh, and also I think it's easier for me to do these live uh, when I already have the pencil subject matter done because I don't have to worry about then the creativity of the subject matter. I just have to worry about the execution of color work. <laughs> Maybe you just launched a friend. He was just waiting for a fellowship to come by and have a game night. <laughs> I really should also create like a zombie pig and a witch pig. I mean, don't hold me to it, but I, I could see me doing like a little series of these like potbelly pig um, Halloween characters. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely feeling this. So let's see the changes we made just in that time. Oops. Oh, that's right, we did on top of the pencil one. Hold on. So this was the work we did before we colored on top of the pencil, and then the work after. You can see just subtle changes here and there. Man, there's something that overlay does make it feel more digital though. Are you guys are you guys seeing that though? It like goes from more traditional colors to hot spots. You know what? I'm just gonna turn that overlay down just a hair more. Maybe like halfway. Like there'd be a hint of some like mystical color use, but not like super obvious that it was just an overlay. And that's what Justin Gerard does. He's the artist that does the bottom and what this whole monster uh, mask challenge came from. And you see how his stuff never feels, it's definitely saturated in areas, but it never feels hot spotty. And I feel like I do that with color sometimes and I'm trying to stay away from it. Cause I like the look of a traditional um, color use. So uh, we'll see. Something I could do though, me. Right, I'm gonna make another copy of this. I'm gonna do something really crazy. I'm gonna merge literally the whole thing. I just want to see what it would look like with some quick level adjustments here too. You can see how this would make it look really digital if you go too much with the levels. See what that looks like on and off. Eh, not even that big of a difference. Honestly, not worth even combining it into one layer then. Yeah, you know what? I think he's pretty much done. Oh yeah, it looks like you guys. Uh... Oh, you guys are so nice. A Christmas pig. I could do a Christmas, like a little Santa pig. Maybe I'll do like one per holiday. I guess I kind of missed the mark on uh, in America we're doing the Thanksgiving this week, but maybe Christmas. Maybe I'll do a Christmas pig and then do a live stream for that one. That almost became a murderous pig when it was so dark. Yeah, he definitely got a little scary there for a second. And I guess maybe the last, last thing we can do is just see what he would have looked like if he was green. Let me do the quick. I mean... It still works as zombie pig, but I think, or as vampire pig, but I do think, I agree. I think it reads as zombie more than vampire. Um, those just look ridiculous. Ugh. The magenta one. When I have more of like this orangey tone, uh, I do like it, but when it comes more red, it reminds me for some reason. Do you remember the bat from the Anastasia animated movie? Uh, it reads more as a bat to me in the face with the reds than it does as a pig uh, because I tried to make the nose more like a vampire bat uh, and like mixed it, merged it with a pig. Uh, and that's where that snoot came from. So I guess, yeah, green, it would have worked, but I think it, as a vampire, you know what, we'll keep it more in the red. Ooh, or in the orange. You know, I don't hate the super yellow either. Oh, I might keep that. What are you guys thinking? Should I do the red, orange, or the yellow? Oh, I could go for either of them. Oh, and I forgot that this, the chat's like 20 seconds behind. Then you know what? I might make the... This is the part where color really gets under my skin because when there's certain options that they all could work just depending on what mood you're trying to give off. You know what? I feel like we stuck with the orange for the whole theme of Halloween. 
I'm gonna stick with it. We're gonna we're gonna call it with the orange because I feel like the whole stream we were working with it. We committed we committed early to orange. Orange has entered the chat and they're staying, and we're gonna keep it that way. Oh, now you guys are saying yeah, like yellowish orange. Yeah, maybe when I do the final little touch ups here and there, maybe I'll add just like little speckles of yellow. We'll see. All right, well, I am going to end off the stream. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming to this live stream. I do these periodically, uh, and I definitely have a couple that I want to do in the uh, next couple months. We'll see. But definitely stay tuned as I plan on doing one for Grizzy and uh, one on time management and then possibly a winter pig. We'll see. We'll see if I, I can garner the, the time to do that. But for those of you who may not know, we have a Discord that you can join below. Uh, obviously, I have my Instagram and Twitter links below, but the big thing is I just updated our Etsy shop and it has my books finally after like literally eight months of not having books, we finally have the books back in. So it also, I made a collector case, I know kind of hard to see on the mini screen here. Um, but yeah, all three of my books finally back, um, specifically the third one, which was kickstarted last spring. And it was it went through like development hell, but thankfully it turned out exactly how I wanted it to, and the uh, the values everything about it are just exactly what I wanted. So you can check those out from the link below, and actually you get a free enamel pin if you purchase in the next week. And I think that's all the big updates I have right now. And yeah, I just hope you guys have a good rest of your day or a good rest of your night, depending on where you're from. And thanks again for joining me. All right. Take care, everyone. Good night, 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 good night.